Good afternoon, listeners, and welcome to today's edition of the Business Corner. I'm your host, Sandrine Rattan. Today is Monday, June 5th, 2017, and my usual status is sincerely thank our sponsors, First Citizens, and the Career Business Hatchery for supporting this important initiative. Last week, we started our conversation on youth entrepreneurship, and my guests were Shadron Collins, General Manager, Youth Business Trinidad and Tobago, Crystal Cave, Director, Entrepreneurial Development Support Services at YTEP, and young entrepreneurs Brian Benoit and Candice Lashley, who all shared varying perspectives on the importance of entrepreneurship, particularly in these times of economic decline. And we will definitely be continuing the entrepreneurial conversations. Today, our focus is on the issue of unemployment, the, the statistics of which are cause for concern. Recently, we heard announcement by the government regarding the closure of Caroni Green, the Government Human Resource Services Limited, the Tourism Development Company Limited, the Seafood Industry Company Limited, and more recently, GISL. These alone total approximately 500 individuals, average, that are on the breadline. In one of the weekly business magazines dated May 18, 2017, there was a startling piece themed more than 4,000 retrenched between 2015 and 2016 and the article is really questioning unemployment stats provided by the Central Statistical Office. Finance Minister Comenbert is quoted in the article as saying the number of unemployed people rose to 25,500 by the end of 2016 from, th from 21,900 the year before or by less than 4,000. The minister went on to say that this is a far cry from the wild figure of 25,000 job losses being bandied about by members opposite. So what are the real figures? What is the real situations? And I'm pleased to have as my guest today three of the contributors to that very important article. On the line with us is Rudin Dar Singh, opposition member for Kuva North. He is also the shadow minister for enterprise and enterprise development and labor and in studio i have joseph remy who wears many hats he's secretary general of the communication workers union on the line with us is mr kurt headley head retail of first at first citizens and first citizens is indeed one of our kind sponsors of this um important um initiative mr headley good afternoon and welcome hi good afternoon sandrine and welcome again thank you for having us Yes, sorry for the delay, but, you know, it was unavoidable. So, Mr. Headley, you are head retail. Tell us briefly um, what that position entails in terms of your responsibilities. Uh, well, the head of retail is responsible for establishing of goals, procedures, policies, guidelines, all leading towards the development of and also surpassing expectations of the customers, our customers and our stakeholders. Good. Another critical part of the function mm -hmm. is the operational performance and growth of the retail branch network. Mm -hmm. And this is all leading towards making full citizens the, the preferred service provider. Now, I know, Mr. Headley, on our first program on May 22nd, we had uh, Mr. Jason Julian, Deputy CEO, responsible for business generation. And one of the things that came out strongly in the conversation was the whole question of customer experience, the first citizen's customer experience. And I'm suspecting that in your position as head retail, that would be at the top of your agenda, yeah? Yes, it is. Alright, as I said, our motto, we put you first, is really to ensure that um, we channel a lot of energy in making sure whatever products that we do, we do it with the customer in mind. Good, good. And what are some of the services offered under your, um, your jurisdiction? Okay, so overall in the retail banking, we provide a full suite of products, the deposit products, um, the loan products. Um, we also support our electronic area in terms of delivery of credit card services. Um, yeah, those are the three principal things, all done through providing effective customer service to our much needed customers. Great. So, Mr. Mr. Headley, we will continue having conversation with you. Um, so, thanks for this short segment and we definitely thank you and, you know, we, have, we will be asking our 
um listeners to communicate with us any more information that they require um from you in terms of first citizens and the services we will certainly be in touch much appreciated thank Have you a good one. Again for having us. you're most welcome okay bye that was Mr. Headley, Mr. Kurt Headley, Head of Retail at First Citizens. And shortly, we will, we will be joined on the line by Mr. Demijohn Crookshank, Chairman of the, Tob the Tobago Division of the Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Just to give us, just to give us some, you know, an update really on the Tobago Seabird situation. Whilst we wait on Mr. Crookshank, we will just look at some of the stories that are trending and you know we recently or like last week a milestone gas supply contract was signed by the national gas company of Trinidad and tobago and the energy company bptt and NG ngc is quoted as saying with existing gas agreements coming to an end in 2018 we have signed a milestone gas supply contract with bptt securing a future domestic gas supply for trinidad and tobago and of course we would continue to follow this development already some economists are saying that we, we should not become too relaxed as a result of this agreement i think we have mr crookshank on the line mr crookshank good afternoon and welcome good afternoon good afternoon to all the listeners at one or two good afternoon and thank you for joining us mr crookshank the tobago sea bridge is seems to be far from over um in terms of the issues and the challenges being faced by you know travel between both islands i know the latest development is that yesterday um prime minister Ke dr keith rowley he um chose to sail on the ferry to get a first-hand experience as to uh, you know what is taking place what can you share with us at this time well, uh, well i i i want i want to commend dr rowley for taking the initiative to at least have a first-hand uh, view as to what the, the people and the citizens of both trinidad and tobago go through on a daily basis trying to get back and forth between trinidad and tobago uh, as we speak, uh, the same vessel, the express that Dr. Rowley came up on, uh, is in Tobago, and all sailings for Tobago has been cancelled. Uh, all sailings, they were trying to use the water taxis. I just got a press release from the Port Authority that all sailings for the water taxis has been cancelled. Oh so what you have is that nobody can travel between uh, Trinidad and Tobago via sea today. And this is this is something that is going on on a daily basis, and we need to really and truly have a, a stop to this crisis, because it's literally a crisis. If you had somebody plan to go down to Trinidad today uh, to do medical uh, research or you went to do schooling, you know that was impossible today. And what it what is causing it eh, uh, is not just the port. What is doing is putting a serious backlog on the air bridge because Carl just cannot handle those number of passengers who is trying to get the future man and to be one of the enemies. so mr crookshank as it stands now what does it look like on the island in terms of business um because you know we have this whole issue of goods um in transit between both islands what is the situation now given all of these cancellations and delays and so well well you have this situation and i and, and i want to be specific eh? This cannot continue anymore. We have to, have to, have to deal with this. Uh, the Chamber, the Tobago Division, been saying uh, for a long time, listen to us, this is what is going to happen. Uh, we begged the minister in a meeting, we said, listen, do not bring out the spirit, the express also dried up. Please let it fix, let the, the engineers take their time and fix it. Because we knew, we knew the age of these vessels. Remember the two vessels, the Spirit and the Express is outside of the lifespan of, of, of these fast ferries. Yeah? Yes, the, the lifespan is really 15 years. They are way outside of the lifespan. So we, we have to treat with these uh, pieces of equipment with the utmost respect and delicacy right now. Because what happens is any, if you try to rough up these, these vessels or you try to put extra weight on these vessels, they will shut down. And, and we have seen what we've been what we've been saying that listen you have the tourism the local tourism product depend on the, the two fast ferries people will bring their kids to, to tobago uh via the sea bridge and bring up their cars stay in villas guest houses those problems are really actually hitting 
the smaller business people. Uh, we, we've seen that we're now going into the summer vacation. That will be challenging if we do not fix this problem. So, yes, Mr. Dr. Rowley came up on the vessel. Uh, what next? That is what we are asking. So, but Mr. Cruikshank, did um, Dr. Rowley give any kind of assurances in terms of um, next steps? I mean, yes, he saw the, and we appreciate the no, fact that he took the no, time. No, no, I don't think he, he met with anybody after he came off. He probably was just exhausted because remember he would have left Trinidad about 3.45 p.m. yesterday afternoon and never arrived in Tobago until about 9 p.m. last night. This is, these are two fast ferries that would have normally take two and a half hours. Yes. Now we are looking at taking approximately six hours, uh, five and a half hours. So you, you understand what the challenge is on a day to day basis. If you have the summer season or, or the, or the, the, the uh, vacation season that is coming up. And if you try to run, we have the spirit is out right now. That out, uh, it, it has to immediately has to go and dry it up because there are serious problems with that vessel. We're trying to use the, 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 the express, which is limping along. Uh, we met with the port about two weeks ago, and the port authority board, Miss Lewis, did indicate to us that uh, what they would have done, they would have done the evaluations on the vessel for both the cargo and fast ferries, and they would have submitted to the, to the uh, cabinet notes uh, to, to cabinet for approval. For one, they were leasing off another fast ferry while the, the spirit goes off the dry dock and, and take the time and fix it and, uh, and a, a replacement for the cargo situation because that and again is another nightmare that we are facing. Well, Mr. Krukshan, my final question to you is um, what do you estimate the, um, the cost you know, in terms of the financial losses on the islands with business being affected due to the delays? What kind of... Uh, we, we will go in the figures of millions. Uh, what we have asked our members, we have asked our members to start telling because people would have obviously got their end of month uh, 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 financials so we are asking our members to pre please bring to us quickly let us see what sort of losses we would have uh, incurred for the last two months since we had this situation uh, occurring right now Mr. Mr. Krukshang it was you know indeed a pleasure chatting with you thanks for taking the time out to share with us an update on um, that particular issue we would continue um, keeping in touch with you and have a great evening thank you very much okay thank you that was mr demijan crookshank chairman of the tobago division of the tobago chamber of industry and commerce sharing with us an update on um the tobago sea bridge also you can catch podcasts of previous episodes or editions of the program via power 102 fm's facebook page or you can send an email to us the business corner 102 at gmail.com or whatsapp 2686078 and that we will leave it there for today in terms of the business corner we did have a packed program thank you for listening until next week monday same time 2 p.m